the seventh recruit class of the Columbia City EMT Academy and the Columbia City High School Fire Academy. It is with great pleasure that I get to share with you tonight a glimpse of what the last nine months have been like and able to introduce the newest generation of firefighters and EMTs here in Woodland County as well as Noble County. I'd like to begin uh, by giving special thanks to Dr. Laura McDermott with the County Consolidated School Superintendent, Jennifer Reed, Director of Innovation and Technology, the staff at Columbia City High School, and finally the fellow students of this recruit class. These students marched up and down the hallways this morning. They have the last few days to, to get that right. They've seen everything. And if they take a little bit of the pride that this class has as they move forward. I would like to now introduce our first honored guest. Uh, actually, uh, Mr. Muller is unable to attend tonight. He has a family matter in another state, so he cannot actually get over here. Um, so I would like to introduce our second honored guest. Volunteer firefighter for Chair Busco, 
Post Commander for American Legion Post 157, as well as a member of the Whitley County Sheriff's Department. Together with them, we are very proud to introduce to you our fire and EMT graduating class tonight. Thank you.
same occasion where it uh, parents it's been a pleasure to get to know your kids. I learn from them about every day, sometimes good, sometimes bad. But it was kind of a trade-off. Um, and I have to say, as I'm starting to look at the sunset of my career, um, it's really nice to know that that the future is pretty bright because these kids all have the drive to learn even if they don't go to the fire service. I can tell by every one of them that they have that drive to go out there and get things done. I didn't prepare anything. In fact, I didn't really know I was going to talk to anyone. Other than I really want to thank you for getting the opportunity to come up here and hang out with your kids because they're all wonderful. Like you have nothing left to give, 
Let your character be fueled with the drive. And let your compassion be the guiding force that compels you to treat every patient as if they were a member of your own family. Remember, it is not just the physical wounds we heal, but also the emotional ones. Be the calm in the storm, the reassuring voice that brings solace to those in distress. And finally, loyalty. We are family bound together by the common purpose of serving others. In this line of work, trust and teamwork are paramount. We rely on each other, lean on each other, and together we form an unbreakable bond. Be loyal to your colleagues, support them in their times of need, and never hesitate to ask for help when you need. Remember, we are stronger together. Now before I conclude, let's sprinkle a little touch of humor into this heartfelt moment. We EMTs, known for our ability to find humor in the most unexpected places, it's our token mechanism, our way of maintaining our sanity in the face of unimaginable things. So as you embark in this incredible journey, don't forget to laugh. Laugh at the of situations you find yourself in, at the quirks of human nature, and most importantly, <clears throat> at yourself. Laughter is not just good for our soul, it's the glue that holds us all together. In closing, my dear graduates, remember that you have chosen a path that few can tread. It's pulling that demands everything from you, but rewards you with the knowledge that you have made a difference in someone's life. Yeah. Hold your heads high, Wear your uniform with pride and go forth into the world, knowing that you have the power to change lives. And again, I feel very honored to have these students and some of these fire students ride on the ambulance, and I take them out tomorrow. Very proud of a couple of them that have gotten hired on part two. Uh, first time apprentice um, that has been put into place. That would be Mr. Dylan Johnson, um, a nice preceptor, and he comes to work um, every three, three days a week, sometimes two days a week, until he graduates and gets his certification. Grant Curley, very proud of that young man. He is uh, hired out at Parkview Regional into the nursing program. Was doing this. Uh, in the very beginning, I asked each and every one of the students what their role is. Where, where did they want to go? And introduced them to everybody that I've come across. I've got firefighters, EMS, uh, nurses, police officers. So with all of us, I hope we guide them um, in the right path. And always remember that we're here for you.
seventy percent of higher tax class, one point seven percent of higher tax tax. Um, we also said that we would be taking textbooks and workbooks home, and we would be doing a lot of work with them. We expressed that that was pretty much the only way to pass the class because once you're behind, it is very tough to get back into shape. Although this class was a lot of work, the opportunities, hard work, and dedication it requires has made me and my fellow classmates better individuals and has allowed us to explore a pathway we may not have had exposure to otherwise. So in conclusion, I didn't really know what I was getting myself into or what the rest of the year was going to look like, but I look back on it now and I'm very, very thankful that I made the decision to enroll. As the year went on, we worked our tails off to get things done. In Fire 1 class, there's hazmat, and there's Fire 1. Jack chose for us to get our hazmat out of the way first, which if you don't know what hazmat is, it is pretty much a chemistry class to a degree. It helps us learn what is dangerous and not, how to deal with different chemicals, precautions, and many more things. Hazmat was most likely the hardest class I've ever taken, and I'm glad we got it out of the way. Once we got done with hazmat, we transitioned into actual fire one, which was around winter time. But we didn't let off the brakes. We still worked hard, maybe through the study, to take chemtips and keep pushing. Many people think of this class as just bookwork, slideshows, or tests, but it is much more than just that. Once we hit fire one, we started having fun and doing lots of skills. Skills are where we put our knowledge to the test, like throwing and climbing ladders, venturing a roof, search and rescue, and all but our favorite, live burn. Live burn was a very fun, helpful, and awesome experience for all of us. The training center we went to made a house with multiple stories. They would start a fire and we would have to go and put it out. At the end of the year, even though I am sad that our class is nearing the end, I am excited for what next year for us fire students has to offer when fire season is in heat. The hardest part of the end of the year by far has to be saying your goodbyes to the fire teenagers and students. We would hang out with the fire team students a lot, and we would have many good memories together, creating a bond that was truly like family. I look forward to seeing them all follow their different paths after high school, and for our bond and connection, I'm very honored grateful. Some of us may be working side by side on different departments or as medics in the future because of this opportunity we all shared in high school. So we are saying goodbye for a little while, but not forever. After high school, the certifications we have earned and the ones we are all looking forward to, many of us are planning on getting our full-time fire department, yet it is a toss-up between what department best suits us and which one we would like to join, but we still have time to think about that. In conclusion, I want to thank everybody again for coming, along with the students, the volunteer department we are on for the opportunity we had, the other departments, and the equipment that let us use the equipment training facility. So and last but not least, Chief Jack Rumsire and Lieutenant Jason Meyer for all the knowledge they have granted us and memories we will hold, all hold on to in the air. <coughs> last but not least, I want to leave you all with a quote from my instructor. The best job in the world is putting your life on the line for someone else's. Thank you.
I've been blessed with the support of the most caring and dedicated educators I have ever had the honor to meet. And I have been able to, through this class, become a part of a fire department that gives me the same opportunities and more. Along with, along with all of the memories and relationships that I'm grateful for, I've learned a few lessons along the way that I, that I hope will hold close for the duration of my, hopefully, upcoming career in emergency services. The first of which is the importance of a good mentor. I talked a little bit about this last year, but I want to get more this year. In my two years here at the Fire Academy, I've had the honor of learning from four amazing firefighters and even better people. It's not the PowerPoints about ladders, fire science, or hose dragging that I've been taught. Anybody can teach them. But these instructors have gone above and beyond in every single way to teach us to show up when we don't want to, to work harder when we're tired. To never stop learning, to love what you do, to always stop for a laugh, and that the most important energy you can spend is on friends and family. We've been coached, disciplined, educated, supported, and loved. All of these things have brought us so far into our journeys and will continue to carry us farther. I speak for all of us when I say that we know who we can call when we need help studying, advice on training, or help hiding the body. The second lesson is one that I firmly believe that everyone from every career setting and walk of life should absorb, and that is the lesson of persistence. Persistence is a noun that equates to a firm or obstinate continuance in a course of action in spite of difficulty or opposition. Essentially, the idea that nobody was born with the skills necessary to be successful in life, and that those traits are learned, earned, and worked for. There's this man. His name is Calvin Coolidge, and apparently he's like the 30th president or something. I'm not quite sure. I did have to Google it, um, so he must not have been that boring. Uh, <laughs> but I found this quote, and he said, Nothing in the world can take the place of persistence. Talent will not, because nothing is more common than unsuccessful men with talent. Genius will not, because, no because unrewarded genius is almost a proverb. Education will not, the world is full of uneducated characters. Persistence and determination alone are our mission. So the third lesson uh, that I've learned that I want to share, uh, once again a pretty good one if I'm allowed to have an opinion, is of family and brother. And if you're one of those guys who like unironically refers to every other firefighter you see on Facebook as your brother, that's a little weird, I'm not going to lie. Um, and I know what you look like before I see you. Uh, but when they say that the fire service is a brotherhood, that's how in two years, I have formed the strongest and most meaningful relationships with the guys sitting right here than, than anyone can have. Two years ago, we walked into a classroom, not knowing or trusting it. We were classmates. But as time went on, we began studying together, training together, cramming together, stressing together, laughing together, celebrating together, and crying together. We became a family before we knew that we could become friends. This group of classmates two years ago went from sharing a class period together once a day to sharing weekends, holidays, and memories. There is no group of people that I would go to for a good time or an alibi or an alibi before these boys. And I am so, so proud of those relationships. But the thing that I'm trying to get at here is that while we did receive a quality education and we did receive all of our required certification, the most valuable things that we have learned and gained from this experience cannot be read from the textbook. <coughs> And I think we're all getting like really bored, um, so I'm going to finish up so you can say just a little bit of your attention span for the ten valedictorian speeches that you guys are going to have to listen to on the night. Um, but I want to thank everyone um, because if you're sitting in this room, odds are you've probably done something to support someone standing on the stage, sitting on the stage right now. So I want to thank the chiefs and members of our department for welcoming like 35 cadets um, and taking the time to work with us the faculty who have made this program possible, our instructors for taking the time out of their day to be so awesome, and our parents for not only supporting their child in the program, but opening their homes, sleepovers, <laughs> friendsgivings, family game nights, and loud teenagers. Um, so thank you guys so much. <laughs>
on the personal growth as well as the growth of our class. While I cannot attest for all of my classmates, I believe that my experience this year will resonate with the majority. Last year at this time, I was choosing classes in preparation for my senior year. I've always had a deep interest in the medical field as well as a passion to care for and serve others. Therefore, it was a no-brainer that I would be pursuing a medical internship or course that would best prepare me for my future. And although I had very little knowledge of what the EMT course entailed, I made the decision to take it. When I entered the classroom on August 17th and was faced with the realization that I had all but one friend, I felt instant dread. And who wouldn't? As humans, we avoid uncomfortable situations and spending two hours a day for 180 days with people I was not familiar with is uncomfortable. But despite this, I kept an open mind, hoping that what I would learn in this course would pay off and make it all worth it. And let me tell you, it did. With the instruction of Mama Pat, we, we have learned the mental and physical requirements of EMT skills. From bandaging a cut to managing a cardiac arrest, we have been taught the many ways we can save lives. And while a primary aspect of this course is book work, of which we covered all 42 chapters, we focused on hands-on learning. Mrs. Essinger gave us many opportunities for us to learn what we faced in the field. We went on field trips, training days, and each one of us shadowed Whitley County EMS personnel. We visited the, the, the cadaver lab in Carmel, where we saw the internal human body, the internal human anatomy up close. We paired up with fire to learn extrication procedures, and for the past four months, we have spent time on the ambulance interacting with patients. Each and every one of these experiences put our book knowledge to the test and prepared us to be better EMTs. And although I had doubts about this course, I am extremely thankful for those who encouraged me to persevere. This class has been, this class has proven to be influential in more ways than one. We have advanced our abilities to be hands-on in our learning, to work diligently, and to work as a unit to achieve group goals. But most importantly, we have learned to increase our knowledge of the medical field and life of not only EMTs, but other first responders. Not only have we learned to be EMTs, but we've been given the opportunity to make friends. As I mentioned before, I began the class with one friend, but I can now confidently say that I've created a relationship with every single one of my classmates. And it has been a pleasure and great learning experience to be surrounded by a diverse set of people the desire to care for others and make the most time with me. However, the knowledge and skills we learned this year would not be possible without Mrs. Reese, our program director, the Whitley County EMS personnel who shared their knowledge, and most importantly, our instructor Pat Esslinger, who works full time in addition to dedicating her time and knowledge to teaching us. Pat, no matter what we pursue in the years ahead or how we use what we learned this year, we will always be your EMT rock stars. Thank you.
Firefighter Connor Green is going to be pinned by Fire Chief Donna Poole. Firefighter Ian Schumann is going to be pinned by Captain Kyle Francis. Firefighter Landon 
Dylan Johnson. most improved. When she came into the class, she didn't even say a word. But when I say, hey, you ready to get out there on the ambulance and help us out, I have this beautiful smile. And she has really buckled down and has been just amazing. that are going to be uh, leaving for the military. Yes, I'm ex-military, five years as combat engineer. Uh, I have Riley that will be leaving for the National Guard. Am I correct? Go ahead and stand, please. Olivia <laughs> will be leaving also for the National Guard. And I have Ms. Carly Murray. Thank you. 
Democratic when he grows up. So Gavin is also now registered with I expect to take the paramedic program in uh, the fall. So good luck. And Thank you. 